From the student hacking together tiny projects to the senior engineer getting paged at 2 a.m. to save production, let's break down the seven levels of programmers. Whether you're just starting out or already explaining DNS to product managers, you'll probably find yourself somewhere on this list. Level one, the beginner. You've just discovered coding. You don't even fully understand what compiling means, but you feel unstoppable. You follow your first YouTube tutorial, copy the code line by line. And when Hello World actually prints, you feel like you've just hacked NASA. You have no idea what version control is, but you've got 10 different versions of the same file. Project Final, V4, Final, Really Final, dot .py. Your biggest enemy? Typos. And your biggest fear? The endless cryptic errors filling your console, none of which make any sense yet. Level 2, the copy paster. You've discovered Stack Overflow, and life will never be the same. You don't understand the code, but it works. You live by one rule. If it compiles, I win. If you're a student, you spend hours working on dozens of tiny programming assignments, each one slightly different, but all basically the same exercise with new variable names. You just want it to run no matter how ugly it looks. Your tabs are a graveyard of tutorials, half-working snippets, and that one blog from 2011 that somehow solved your exact problem. When someone asks you what your code does, you say, it depends on what you mean by does. And yet, somehow you're learning. Each bug you fix by accident makes you just a bit stronger. Level three, the junior developer. You've joined your first team, or maybe you're doing a big university project. You start understanding more advanced concepts of programming languages, not just loops and variables, but how things really connect under the hood. You even comment your code, proudly. Then you open your first legacy project, thousands of lines of code you didn't write. Half the functions have names like process data two, or final fix old thing. No documentation, no mercy. That's when you realize this is what real developers deal with. You spend days just trying to understand what's going on. You fix one thing and break three others. And you begin to appreciate why people talk so much about refactoring. You don't know exactly what it means yet, but you're starting to suspect it involves suffering. Level four, the competent coder. You found your rhythm. You can build features on your own and you mostly know what you're doing. You've stopped Googling what is API and started asking, what's the best way to design this API? You now identify strongly. I'm a Java dev. I'm a front-end engineer. Your whole sense of identity is tied to your stack. You defend your language in online debates like it's your child. It's concise. It treats you right. It's concise if you treat until it right. the interpreter trips over itself. Rust catches those mistakes before they even breathe. And while you but deep down, you still sometimes commit straight to main. You promise yourself it's just for a quick fix. You're now trusted with new features. And one day, you proudly release your first big one, only to realize it broke something critical in production. Welcome to professional development. Level five, the professional developer. Now you're a full-time dev. You get paid to code, and sometimes to not code. You've learned that half your job is reading other people's code. You start doing thorough code reviews. You don't let juniors merge anything without proper tests. And you begin to think deeply about writing code at the right level of abstraction. You begin to notice patterns. Most bugs come from quick fixes. Temporary solutions live forever. And will refactor it later means never. You no longer panic when something breaks. You panic when it doesn't. Because that usually means it's silently failing somewhere else. You start to mentor juniors. You finally understand the difference between it works and it's maintainable. And you realize debugging takes longer than coding. And that's okay. Level six, the architect. Now you see the bigger picture. Languages don't matter as much anymore. Java, Python, Go, they're all tools. AWS, GCP, bare metal, just different ways to ship a solution. You talk more with product and business than with other devs. You're designing systems, not functions. You spend hours on diagrams, trade-offs, and explaining why you can't just add a small button that triggers five microservices. You've stopped arguing about frameworks. You've stopped memorizing syntax. You think about architecture, scaling, reliability, things that used to sound boring when you were level three. And yes, you miss coding sometimes. But now you realize that solving people's problems often means less typing, more thinking. Level seven, the legend. You've become the person everyone calls when things go wrong. You know multiple languages, paradigms, design patterns. You've written libraries that others depend on, maybe even open source ones. Your Stack Overflow answers have thousands of upvotes. You've stopped chasing shiny new tech. You chase clarity. And the funniest part? You still write the occasional dumb bug, 
you just find it faster and blame it on legacy code. So, which level are you at right now? Maybe you're still writing your first Hello World, or maybe you're the one explaining why the cron job failed again. Wherever you are, remember, no matter your level, everyone's been there, staring at code that should work, but doesn't. Hit subscribe for more tech facts, where we explore the fun, weird, and sometimes painful truths of being a developer.